Hey everybody, Chad Perkins here for Red Giant. In part three of this little tutorial series on Trap Code DAO, we're going to look at how to make our geometry just look awesome. If you haven't seen parts one and two of this series, I really recommend checking those out first before diving in. That being said, let's do so. I got my DAO geometry here. I'm going to start in the material and lighting section. That's where the magic starts for me. I'm gonna to go to the color swatch here. I'm gonna pick a sexier color than white. Let's make a nice little mint green color. I'm gonna do 160, 90, 80. Now it's looking a little flat and a little weak to me. So I could go over here in the material and lighting section and we have some kind of some common material attributes like diffuse, ambient, all the usual suspects, specular, shininess. If we wanted to bump up specularity there, we get some specular highlights on this. Uh, I'm going to uh, take that down to a reasonable number, and instead I'm going to actually create an After Effects light here. I'm going to create a point light, white, intensity 100%, click OK, and then I uh, bring that in here, and look at that. Ooh, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Now, another thing I could do here, actually, is create a special type of light, especially for Dow, called a Lumi light. So I'm going to make another light, and this is another one you got to name correctly. I'm going to use all caps. I'm going to uh, cr create the name Dow Lumi. That's T-A-O space capital L-U-M-I, all caps. And I'm going to give this one a special little color so we can tell it apart from the other one. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And as I bring this light around, it's not this quite the same as a regular After Effects light. We're not seeing the, uh, the influence of it just yet. But when I get it close to my geometry, you saw that little flash there, and ooh, it kind of interacts with geometry in a, in a way that After Effects lights can. It kind of goes inside the geometry. It's great for illumination effects and such. For more information about Lumi lights, be sure and uh, check out the DAO documentation where it kind of goes into detail about these little guys, but that's yeah, looking pretty cool there. I'm going to go ahead and delete the uh, DAO Lumi night for now, though. I'm going to select my DAO layer, go back to Material and Lighting. Now, down at the bottom of Material and Lighting, there's this Image-Based Lighting section. And I am all about Image-Based Lighting here in DAO. It just looks amazing. We could use an environment map here to create reflections as if this was in an environment somewhere. So I could go to the Built Environment, and, in, and DAO actually comes with all of these maps built in. So I could choose Sunset Field, for example. That's a little hardcore. So I could go to Reflection Strength, dial that back a smidge. I could increase uh, Diffuse Strength if I want to get some more of that green back. Just play with these settings until I get what I like. I actually think that the map is landing weird on a couple of these little polygons. So I'm just going to rotate the environment using the titular parameter. Now we kind of have a faint kind of nondescript reflective -y surface and you can't really tell exactly what it is, which is great. Now you could go into your Red Giant account and there'll actually be high res image maps for you to download. And you could use your own from the uh, right here, the uh, reflection environment map drop down and choose another layer in your comp if you want to do that. Let's look at another example of image based lighting in action. I have this tunnel here. Let's go ahead and preview this and see what it looks like. Kind of nice. We got some cool reflections here. This is image-based lighting using a different map in this section here. Still material and lighting, image-based lighting, but it's uh, the dark industrial map. Without that map, it you know it still looks okay, but it's uh, darker and it just doesn't feel as lifelike. So we get those reflections in there, and uh, yeah, just magical. Now another thing I like about this particular project is that there's fog here. That adds a lot of realism. Let me show you how to do that here. I'm going to go to the visibility section uh, towards the bottom of the DAO interface there. And we have fog end and fog color and fog start, of course. And so basically this these values determine uh, in pixels and the Z depth on the Z axis where the fog starts and where the fog ends. So this says that 30 pixels away from the viewer, the fog will begin and it will end almost 12,000 pixels away. So because the fog start value is so low, it means that there's actually a lot of fog really close to the camera. So if I made this, you know, I don't know, 2000 or something like that, it's going to push the fog back in Z space so that the front of the camera or the front of the, uh, the scene that's closer to the camera is a little bit less noisy, less foggy. 
Now, fog is great for adding depth like this to make something seem like it's you know deep and farther away, creating a mood of mystery like this. But fog can also be a, an interesting tool for design and also compositing. In this case, I wanted to add some of the orange gradient from the background into the back of these spheres that have been repeated with uh, some repeaters. So what I can do is go to the visibility section. I'm gonna change the fog color swatch to more match that orange. I'm gonna choose hue of 35, saturation is 76. That'll get us there. And the fog is uh, starting a little bit late and ending really late, so we're not seeing it. So I'm gonna bring it much closer by changing the fog start value to, well, not 200, that's a little bit too close. Let's try 2200. But now the fog end is so far away that that gradient, it just, it fades out before we can really even see it. So let's bring the fog end closer, say 3500, and then now we have fog at the end of our uh, spheres here, and it's kind of localized, like right there. It's a small little window in Z space, and it's exactly where we want it to be. It kind of helps us composite a little better. And again, it adds a little bit of depth, but it's more like a design tool, like kind of like a makeshift texture. Now, if you want to add real textures, of course, Dow has you covered there as well. Let's look at a good example of that. I have here this uh, planet scene, and um, I've created this sphere with Dow, and it just really sticks out a lot. It's like this big shiny ball where a really beautiful planet should be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my Dow area here, my Dow layer, and in the texture section, I have a color texture set to none. But this here in the texture section is where I can go to apply a texture to my layer. And here's the texture that I'm going to use. I have this map that I've created, and it's an equirectangular map, so it's gonna map really well to our sphere. It's also animated, which we'll see in a second. And I could go back to Dow, change the color texture to this pre-comp ball text layer, and look at that, bada bing. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Now, one of the problems is, is the specularity here. This kind of creating these like shiny little spots. It kind of looks like a bowling ball in space. And we don't want that. So I actually can go back to material and lighting and take the specularity, the specular value, all the way down. And as we do, then those specular highlights go away, and now we have a pretty nice planet scene. Notice these lights right here in the background that are, you know, making things nice and realistic and stuff. And we could adjust those if we so choose. Look at that. If we animate like the sun coming up or something. Now, as I mentioned, this texture is animated, and it doesn't really work well in this particular instance because I don't know if atmospheres of planets animate that fast, but you can still see it carrying over and we have that option to use animated textures as textures in DAO if desired. Now let's switch gears a little bit here. Once we're all done with our project, it's time to add some finishing touches. And a lot of those finishing touches are found right here in the rendering section at the end or the bottom of the DAO interface. One that I frequently use is ambient occlusion, which creates little pockets of shadows in the creases of geometry. So I'm gonna increase AO intensity, AO short for ambient occlusion. Now you wanna make sure the ambient occlusion is set to on or one of the three dither modes, which is, you know, that means on as well, but just not set to off if you wanna use ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna increase intensity and you'll see here, you'll start to see some little in the cracks and crevices, you'll start to see some of that AO intensity. And I can take down radius to make those a little bit tighter or increase those to diffuse those a little bit more, make that a little bit softer. And so again, here's the before, here's off, and here's with ambient occlusion. Now let's look at some other options here. We can actually change the way that geometry is rendered to achieve different looks. So I'm gonna go down to rendering here, and by default, the shader at the top of the rendering group is set to flat. That kind of creates this really cool faceted geometry look, great for low poly type stuff. Uh, but I could also change this to smooth, which smooths out the geometry. Now there are still some creases here. If I go back to segment, you'll see that we actually have break sides checked, which kind of creates these little uh, kinks in the, the geometry. So I could deselect break sides, and now we have a smoother mesh overall. I could also increase the sides and the segments value to further smooth that out. 
So as far as shader options go, we have three. We have flat, the default, which we looked at, smooth, which we're looking at now. There's also this density business. Let's talk about that in another example here. I have these uh, polygons and they're animated and they move around and that's kind of cool. But I want to make these look like they're blended together with semi-transparent edges. And I have this opacity value and I'm lowering it down, but it just kind of washes everything out. Well, enter the density shader. If I take the shader in the rendering group from flat to density, that changes how these interact. And now these polygons uh, start kind of having some semi-transparent edges. And then I go to the blend dropdown and change this from off to add. And now we have something that is very appealing and exactly what I was looking for. And our opacity here, because add is being used and the density shader is being used, this uh, creates some really attractive results. Now, in this example, we have some pockets of good contrast, but some of these polygons are kind of getting lost into the shadows. And sometimes you might want that, but in this case, I don't. And I have this uh, in the rendering uh, group here, we have the second pass dropdown. This allows us to uh, apply or overlay a wireframe mesh on top of the existing mesh. Now, we could go over to the draw dropdown and change this from fill to wireframe and actually make this a wireframe. I don't want to do that. I want to keep what I have and then overlay wireframe on top of it, which is what second pass is for. So I'll take second pass from off to wireframe. And now I have wireframes over my mesh. I could see all these polygons. And let's render this and see what it looks like. Beautiful. So after playing with the shaders and playing with the look, we, we have just a really professional final product here. And I've also adjusted some of the fractal displacement, the twist of the geometry, and a few other parameters to get this subtle motion here. But I really love the way this looks. Now, finally, the last step when working with Dow is we want to make sure that everything is as smooth as it can be. Now, if we zoom in here, we could see some extra details and noise that we might not want. So to fix that, we could add super sampling, which I assume is just like regular sampling that's been bit by a radioactive spider. And then we could take super sample, let's say to, I don't know, maybe 9x or something. Usually you don't need to take it anywhere past 9x. There have been a few instances where 16x has worked for me, but I've never needed to go above that. In that case, 9x works for me. And it really just smooths out all that noise and gives us a really nice final polish look. Let's preview that and check it out. Very nice. Just gorgeous molten gold. I love it. Well, folks, that wraps up this tutorial. As you can see, there are loads of ways to add beautiful polish to your Dow Masterpieces. On behalf of Red Giant, I am Chad Perkins. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Take care.